M. Night Shyamalan was a superhero when he burst on the scene with The Sixth Sense. It did exceptionally well, has entered the canon as a major work of filmic art, and the guy has had a long Hollywood career since that has had ups and downs, and has returned to the big screen with a movie called Trap. Starring Josh Hartnett, Trap has a unique and overwrought premise. (laughs) It could have been executed exceptionally well. So did Shyamalan return to the field and knock it out of the park? Grand slam. Back in the good graces of critics and theater goers alike, we shall see. When I watched this movie, I became dizzy from the amount of eye rolling that I was doing. Josh Hartnett, of course, playing the lead character, is ambulating cancer. And not just in this movie. Sometimes he's benign, like he's just a benign cyst. And if you perform a little surgery, you can get rid of him, like in Oppenheimer. But other times, it's late stage, because he's constantly on screen and just does not understand subtext or authenticity. And then when you couple that with M. Night Shyamalan writing like a drunk toddler... You end up with an unsavory theater-going experience. Side note, they made it a point to hire the ugliest extras I've ever seen in my life. I don't know why, but all the extras are just hideous in this. I don't know if that's uh, something thematic, but uh, yeah, they just, they want to do it. Now, as far as child actors go, the daughter, the girl who plays the daughter, I'm going to look up her name because she actually deserves this, Ariel Donahue. Okay, I don't know if she's been in anything else, but uh, she tried. She did not phone it in. She had a couple of scenes where she actually had to act, and she pulled it off. She was pretty decent as an actress, as a young actress. So I was thoroughly surprised by that because she was out-acting the guy who was the central character and has been acting for like 40 years. So that was surprising. The girl who plays the pop star is absolutely horrendous. She's actually, she's not a bad singer, and and the pop songs were not that bad. They were relatively decent for movie pop songs. But the girl is just a terrible actor. And then I would say, you know, 300 to 320 of the extras, uh, I didn't really buy their motivations or their emotional through line that they're trying to sell when they were in the background. I would say about 105 of them did a pretty decent job. And then there was this one girl who walked past the camera at one point and she was fantastic. I mean, she really killed it. So M. Night plot setups, character moments and dialogue are like an AI is trying to figure out basic human interactions and definitely can't get there, but does this weird abstract representation of them. Anyway, so yeah, I guess I should give you an idea what the movie's about. If you haven't seen the trailer, it's pretty clear. The whole thing is that there was this concert that's set up and this guy, Josh Hartnett, takes his daughter to the concert. It's like the the biggest pop star. It's like a Taylor Swift in the world. So he gets his daughter tickets to this concert and they go to the concert, but it turns out that the whole concert is a setup, it's a trap to try to catch a serial killer. And you find out very quickly that Josh Hartnett is the serial killer. There could have been something interesting around that where you're not sure whether he is or not, or there's something psychological going on where he denies it to himself, or there could have been something interesting, but there wasn't. He just is, and they're trying to catch him. So why they couldn't do the whole process as they were being checked in, I don't know. Why they thought it was a a good idea to use an entire concert venue instead of staking out the local Starbucks or McDonald's or something, I don't know. Because their plan is, they don't know what he looks like. They have a few little bits of information based on a profile, and some guys that had been caught on surveillance camera around the murder. So it could be any one of these number of guys. So they have a few characteristics they're looking for. But the plan is to watch 20,000 people in this concert venue or just hope that he can't handle it and murders again within the concert venue uh, so they can catch this one guy. And then they have like 400 police and SWAT people who are supposed to take care of the whole venue. I just, I resource-wise, I (laughs) find it a little... I'm a little incredulous as to this kind of a setup taking place. So I was like a half an hour in. I'd already cringed like 20 times. And I actually had to pause it at one moment. There's this this mother character who has daughters who have a conflict with his daughter. And she goes up to him and is saying like, Oh, well, sorry about what happened between them. And she should come and see the girls. And hopefully they get along. And we can squash this beef and all that stuff. And then later, when he runs into her again, just randomly back in the 
Because remember, they're stuck in this venue for a while, so really the only <laughs> the only plot structure is him either being at the seat or going to get some concessions or something, and that's all that's happening. Because there's not much else that you can do, especially when you're an untalented writer. So he runs into this chick again, and then she says, uh, for some reason, they get into a little bit of a row. And she says, don't mess with me. I have a dark side. You know, obviously, oh god, it's so straightforward. It's supposed to be ironic and funny, but it was just so annoying and cringe-inducing that I just had to pause and recenter myself for a minute. But the whole point is that she initially was timidly trying to repair the issue in the earlier scene, and now suddenly, because they're in front of police, so they want to create a tense moment, she's being combative. Like, nobody ever seems natural or real. There's no concept of continuity of character. It doesn't help that the camera is always right up in their faces, like they're a close talker. All movie, you just want to step back. And throughout this whole sequence, while they're stuck in this thing, multiple people with vital information related to this whole trap thing and the investigation just go to the main character, you look trustworthy, let me tell you about the secret plan to capture a serial killer, (laughs) and just keep giving him vital information. (laughs) And then it was around this point that I actually was interested because this girl who's playing the pop star does not look like a legitimate actress at all. (laughs) I thought maybe she was just a singer who got this role because she could sing, but was not popular because she doesn't look like a pop star either. So I looked it up. I just wanted to see who this girl specifically was. I didn't want to look up anything else about the movie. And it turned out that it's his daughter. I did not realize that. It's M. Night Shyamalan's daughter who plays the pop star in this. So it's this meta thing where M. Night Shyamalan made this entire movie just so his daughter could pretend to be a pop star. Just like they set up a pop concert to lure the serial killer's daughter just so they could catch the serial killer. And there's a fundamental problem to the whole movie in that am I supposed to care that the serial killer gets away? Is that what I'm supposed to be rooting for in the midst of this? Where's the tension? Where's the stakes? Why would I care if I want some terrible serial killer to get away? He's not Dexter. It's like, who cares if he gets caught? I just kept finding myself uh, being disinterested in the outcome from beginning to end. All of it plays so fake. There's no interesting conflict like the father struggling with his past relative to his daughter like how do i tell my daughter that this is what i am or or what if she finds out or anything like that or him feeling the pressure of keeping the secret psychologically because he sees the purity in his daughter loving this concert so much or the weight of his excitement for his daughter having something that she loves so much outweighing his fear of being captured so he'll do things that are more dangerous to him just so he can make her happy it's all just mechanical and empty In the entire resolution of the setup, you know, this it's only the first half of the movie or whatever where they're stuck in this venue, but the whole resolution of that is hinged on this pop star not being incredibly selfish, which is not a bet that I would take. And then it's about at this point, I remember it was like an hour into it, and I thought it was about the end of the movie. I was hoping against hope that that was the case. And it felt like this was the resolution. Okay, done. We There's no more movie left. Uh, let's move on with our lives. But there were, there were still 40 minutes left of this damn thing. And this is when his daughter, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, becomes uh, more of a central character and has a bigger role. And she is just such an awful actor. But she ends up going to their family home... And taking his phone where, oh, right, so there's this whole thing where on his phone he has uh, a video of this guy, like a live feed of this guy that he had taken, who will die if, uh, you know, he presses a button or something like that to release carbon monoxide. So the whole thing is the pop star is trying to save this guy, and that's why she doesn't just, you know, scream out at the many times that she could have. So anyway, at some point she gets his phone locks herself in the bathroom, and instead of immediately calling the police, she also had the address, by the way, instead of immediately calling the police, she goes on Instagram Live and asks her followers to figure out uh, some bit of information that she learned that was related to where this guy was so she could save him. So it was like, uh, I don't know if Instagram paid for this (laughs) to try to remedy their relationship with uh, teenage girls. Because there's all that stuff that came out about how terrible it is psychologically for girls this age to be using this horrible app. But she goes on Instagram Live and some of her followers figure it out for her. And so she has the information where this guy is so she can save him. And eventually, I mean, just police show up and uh, they 
surround the house and there's a whole bunch of pointlessness because they surround the house and he gets away uh, you know there are a whole bunch of times during the movie where it's like oh he's almost caught but he's so clever that he figures out how to get out of here and he dresses as a SWAT person and then ends up driving the girl away and then ends up driving into a large crowd and she gets out of the cuffs or gets pulls the cuff away from the door or something so that she can reach the window for some reason he didn't consider that she didn't even need to lower the window she could have just been screaming from inside that would have been plenty for somebody to do something because they were surrounded by people but then she just slinks out of the car and he drives away shows up back at his house where allison pill with her eyes that are way too close together and place his wife uh like they go through there he finds out that she was the one who like left the ticket out or something so that uh the police could find him anyway it's just oh my god and then he gets caught again uh but he takes a second to pick up his daughter's bike and pull something off the bike so he can get out of the handcuffs later and you know it's just he's such a bad actor every time he's on screen every time the camera is looking at him i get so annoyed because he does not have the acting chops or intelligence or ability to understand what subtext or deeper motivations mean when it comes to an actor I can't believe he hasn't learned this over all the decades that he's been doing this job. That he hasn't gotten better at being able to convey these things. It's like he actively had to try not to learn how to do this any better. For years and years. Anyway, uh, the moral of the story is uh, apparently that teenage girls shouldn't force their dads to go to pop concerts. Or it's that nepotism is bad. Or it's that Josh Hartnett sucks. I mean, M. Night has always been a bad director. And a worse writer. He got lucky with his sixth sense and Unbreakable. They were fun ideas, and they just hit at exactly the right time. But everything else the guy has made has really significant issues, at least. Or they were complete disasters. Like, extinction event level disasters. (laughs) So, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, It was fine for him to have his little comeback with the very low budget movie that did well. He needs to stick to that kind of thing. Because he just does not, like Josh Hartnett, these two were just peas in a pod. Because neither one of them have gotten better at their craft over decades. I don't know how that's possible, but that's just how it's been. So, anyway, yeah, that's Trap by M. Night Shyamalan starring his daughter, and uh, an empty void of a human being. Not his daughter. I'm sure she's lovely. I, I mean Josh Hartnett. So <laughs> that's that's it. If anybody's seen it, if anybody thinks it was there was something that I'm missing about it, or they liked it, or maybe it was all just parody, and there's some kind of meta thematic that's going on about nepotism, I don't know. Let me know, and uh, yeah, we can talk about it. But otherwise, uh, definitely pass on this one. It just came out on streaming on HBO, I think, on Max. Pass, everybody will forget it in like 10 minutes. So uh, that was that. Hope all is well. I think that's about it. All right, I'll see you. Bye.